For a long time, my family and I have made a big difference in my small community. My grandpa opened and owned his own car repair shop, which he passed on to my father, who ran the shop for 50 years. And now at 35 years old, my father handed me the keys to run the shop, so to speak. I love cars and being able to solve the issues that come up, but honestly, I enjoy being able to help the people in the area. I don't know this for a fact, but judging by stories that I see online, it just seems like a lot of mechanics out there try and take advantage of their clients to make a few extra bucks, but not me. Most of my customers are the locals that live in the area or nearby. Often we get customers from nearby areas just because of our reputation. In a time where many people are struggling financially, it benefits to save a few bucks here or there. Occasionally we'll get a customer who is traveling through. My hometown isn't far off an exit that pretty much is in the middle of nowhere if I'm being honest. At least a couple of times a month we'll get someone on a cross-country trip or something like that that ends up having a flat tire or engine trouble. I would say that 99% of the time these folks are friendly and go about their business when finished. On a rare occasion, we'll get someone who is just horrible. Several months ago, I probably had the worst customer in all my time doing this job. This customer wasn't just bad. She was borderline evil. The day started like any other day. Slow for the most part other than an oil change, and around noon, a beautiful woman came strolling in. She was driving a white Volkswagen, and I knew right away that she was from out of town. People in my town didn't look like this woman. I don't mean that as an insult to this woman or the people of my town, it's just the way she was dressed. The makeup she had on, even the way she talked was nothing like the people here. And if that wasn't a dead giveaway, the Vermont license plate was, considering that it's almost a day's drive from here. The woman jumped out of her car erratically and started claiming that she needed her car fixed right away. I didn't like her tone, but business was slow, so I let her continue to aggressively try and explain the issue. She seemed confused and stuttered over her words a little bit. She claimed that while she was driving, the engine started to get really loud, and if she took the car over 50 miles per hour, that it would start to shake. Then, in an arrogant tone that still bothers me, she said, You'll fix this car right now. It was like she was trying to use a Jedi mind trick or something on me. And it took everything I had to not turn her away, but against my better judgment, I took the car in. I told her that she could wait for a while and I would try to find the problem and let her know what she was dealing with. Not long after, I found the issue. And let's just say that it wasn't going to be an easy fix. I informed her that I couldn't fix it today, but I could have it ready by midday tomorrow. And she caused a scene said whatever and just stormed out of the shop. She didn't inquire about hotels, transportation, food, or anything else. She just simply left, leaving me with her car. I assumed that she wanted me to fix it, so I started working on the vehicle immediately. Since I didn't want to deal with her, I decided to work late and finish the job that night, aiming to get rid of her early the next morning, as I anticipated that she might arrive early looking to figure out what's going on. I completed the job at around 10 p.m. and felt pretty exhausted. I began cleaning up the shop and preparing to leave. It was nearly 11 p.m. when I finally was ready to turn off the lights and head home. As I grabbed my coat, I thought I heard a sound coming from the garage, resembling a tool hitting the ground. Since I'm meticulous about my tools and always put them away, I wanted to make sure that I returned anything that fell before leaving. I went back into the garage and upon turning on the light, noticed two of my wrenches on the ground. I was confused because I hadn't used those wrenches at all that day and I couldn't understand how they fell or why they would be in a location where they would fall. Feeling annoyed, I picked them up, and as I was putting the last wrench away, I heard a scream coming from the corner. I turned around and saw the same woman from earlier running toward me with a massive wrench in her hand. She swung but I managed to raise my hands just in time to protect my head. It still hurt, believe me, but thankfully it wasn't a direct hit to my noggin. She struck me again, and then again, and by that point I was on the ground assuming this sort of defensive position while still shielding my skull. She dealt one final blow to my ribs and it was excruciatingly painful. I heard the wrench hit the ground and a few seconds later, 
Her car started, and she sped out of my parking lot. It took a huge effort for me, but I managed to get back on my feet. I first called my wife, and then I called the cops. I should have called the police immediately, but I was simply relieved to be alive and that the ordeal was over, so my thinking wasn't really rational at that moment. Unfortunately, I didn't recall any license plate number that she had, and the only camera in the shop unfortunately didn't capture the license plate or provide a clear view of the woman. Therefore, all I could provide the police was a description of the woman and the make and model of her car. And what's most terrifying to me is that I have no idea why she attacked me. She was trying to bash my head in, and if I hadn't protected myself, she could have caused severe damage. It's also frightening to think that she may have been hiding around my shop that entire day. When I finished working on a car, I hanged the keys behind the register. This woman must have snuck in, unnoticed, and taken the keys while I was closing up, waiting for the moment when I was most vulnerable to launch her attack. If anyone out there spots a white Volkswagen Jetta and encounters a beautiful blonde woman from out of town, exercise caution, as she might be the same insane person who had tried to take my life. If you enjoyed this scary story, listen to thousands more, either over on the Let's Read YouTube channel or podcast.